Welcome. In this video, we're going to go over the ChatGPT workspace so that you can get comfortable with where to find everything. Let's begin. In ChatGPT, it is divided into two parts. Your left hand side, the gray part right here, this is your sidebar. Your sidebar contains the ability to create a new chat, explore other ChatGPTs, and then see a history of your chats as you converse with ChatGPT. On the right hand side, this is your chat box. So this is where you'll have a conversation with a ChatGPT model. Let's go in more detail. Before you begin, you first want to select a ChatGPT model to work with. There are differences between the different models. Let's break down each version so you know which one to use. Version 3.5 is for basic tasks like simple queries, text generation, creative writing, something where speed isn't prioritized over the advanced features of some of the other models. You don't need the advanced reasoning or any multi multi multimodal like the ability to upload images or text or stuff like that. You just want a simple, fast chatbot to work with, and that is going to be for a great everyday tasks. That's version 3.5. I am on the paid plan, which I recommend since we'll go over all the advanced features throughout this course. If you're using the free version, you will have limitations and not get the most out of ChatGPT. So I recommend for this course to go for the paid $20 per month version so that you can see and use all the features and functionalities that ChatGPT offers. Next up is version 4.0. This is where you're starting to work with more complex tasks, such as um, reasoning, analytical abilities, or creating more complex content, for example. You also want the additional features such as analyzing images, videos, or audio, in addition to text. That's when you're going to go up to the version 4.0. The newest version, 4.0, this one has the most capabilities of uh, version 4 plus the multi-modality, the ability to work with images and advanced reasoning um, and the more advanced knowledge that it has, that's the one uh, that most likely you'll be working with. Now there are limitations to how many times you can chat with it or have mess or send messages with the different modes before you're downgraded. If you're on the free plan, ChatGPT free, know that you get access to chat 4.0, but you're limited to only 10 messages every five hours. Now, if you're on the paid plan, when you're working with version 4.0, paid members get around 50 messages every five hour period when using the 4.0 model. And this is a rough estimation and not really exact. Then you'll be downgraded to version 4. Now version 4, you get roughly 50 messages to use with this model every 3 hours. If you are on the Teams plan, you get an increased message capacity that you can start or you can use these models for a longer period of time before the system automatically downgrades you. Then after you use both of those capacities up, our messages, uh, message number up, then you'll be downgraded to version 3.5, which you have unlimited use of. At the very bottom is a mode called temporary chat mode. In this mode, there are three main behaviors that will happen. Behavior number one is that none of the chats that you chat with in using uh, temporary mode, nothing is saved or will appear in your chat history. The second behavior that will happen is that there is no model training, meaning that these temporary chats that you're chatting with ChatGPT with, they will not, the contents of that messages will not be used to improve their models. Where other chats that you, other models that you're using, you, you using that model, the conversations will be fed back into the system to, to improve their models for future use. Lastly, the third behavior is that memory feature is off. I'll go over the memory feature in a next lesson in much more detail. So in our first thing, we want to select a model. I'm going to just select 3.5 just for right now. So after you select your model, now we can begin a chat conversation. At the very bottom is your prompt dialog box. This is where you'll put your prompt or doing prompt engineering. I'm going to do a very simple prompt like tell me a joke. Very simple. 
Once you press, you can press enter on your keyboard or you can press that arrow, black arrow button. And then you will start to see a chat history where you and your chats will be on the right hand side and ChatGPT's response will be on the left hand side. If you make a mistake or you don't, or you forgot to add information, you can always edit your original prompt by clicking on the pen, pencil icon. So I could click there and say, tell me a joke about cats. And then I could click send. Now it sends a new response, but say I wanted to go back to the original response, I could do through the left, uh, left and right arrow right here, I could toggle between my first original prompt and my newly updated prompt back and forth right here. Now let's take a look at the toolbar that is underneath one of the chats that ChatGPT responded with. The first option allows ChatGPT to read aloud what's in the message. Why did the cat sit on the computer? Because it wanted to keep an eye on the mouse. Wonderful. The second option is to copy the message so that you could paste it in your digital notebook. So I could click copy one click button here, I get a checkbox, and then I could go to any notepad, it's already in my clipboard history, and I could just right click, paste, or just control V to also paste. We'll go over additional notebooks in a future lesson. The next option is, say I was not happy with the response and I wanted to try again. I could click the regenerate button, and it will try and regenerate based on the original prompt, a new response and then it would ask for some feedback saying hey was this response better or worse ChatGPT and the models they're always using your interaction with the models to improve the feedback and to improve the models for future uses and I could say yes this was better next button is a bad response say I wasn't happy with it it completely missed the mark it didn't understand my original prompt and it completely just didn't uh, went off in left field. I could click that button and it will send feedback back to ChatGPT so that they can improve the response for future uh, models. A new feature that we have here, and this is especially on the paid one, is the ability to change the model. Each model from 3.5 to 4, let's see, 3.5 to 4 to 4 0, they will output a different response based on the different models that, that basically on how they're trained. Um, so you can change the response. This was written with version 3.5. I could say, what would it look like if it was version 4.0? Then it will take that prompt, feed it to that model, and respond back using that newer model version. Down at the prompt bar below, you also have the ability to attach files or upload documents. To enable that, you can see that it's disabled here because I'm on version 3.5, which doesn't have the ability to upload files or documents. It's just for quick and fast responses. But if I move into version 4 or 4.0, I'm going to do 4, for example. At the very bottom, now I get a paperclip icon. Now, if I click on that paperclip icon, I have the ability to upload from my computer or upload from a Google Drive or connect to a Microsoft OneDrive, for example. I have a file saved on my computer, so I could click Upload from my computer. I could locate that PDF document file, CSV file, or image, for example, and then upload that file. Now I can ask ChatGPT a question where it will now search this file in its local knowledge, for example, and then answer a question. So I could say, what is form 8300, which is something that is specific to the knowledge found in this document. I could press enter on my keyboard or click the up arrow here. It will search and read this document, and then it will answer the question for me based on local knowledge. Wonderful. After you finish writing a few prompts, and let's say you want to save this conversation, it is good practice to be in the upper left-hand side in your sidebar over here to rename this conversation chat history. So this is the it tries to auto tries to auto name it for you just like a file or a document for example but we want to rename it so it's something more specific for example so i could click on the three little dots for this conversation and i could click rename now i could rename this file irs question and then press enter and now this chat has been renamed so that i can find it 
in the future to make it very easy and return back to this conversation to continue off, for example. Over time, as you use ChatGPT very often over the next days, weeks, months, you'll start to see a long list of chat histories and you want to stay organized. One way you can do that is to archive conversations that you don't want to see or use currently, but you want to come back to them at some time in the future, for example. So to archive a conversation, I'm going to click on the three dots and then I'll click archive, which hides it from my chat history or from my sidebar. This is a great way to stay organized. The file is not deleted. To find all your archive conversations, you can go in the upper right hand corner, click on your avatar icon, go ahead and click on settings. A pop out will come out. On the left hand side, if you're in the general section, there's an option right here that says archive chats. I could click manage and there's my archive chat saved, not deleted. I could click here and either delete the conversation or I could click the next button as a folder that says unarchive this conversation. And if I click on it, that conversation will now return, if I close out, back to my chat history in my sidebar. Let's say I want to delete a chat, for example. If I want, if I go to the left hand sidebar and I click on the three dots next to a chat I want to delete, I could click the delete button. This will delete the file. Then you could go ahead and click delete and that file is removed from your sidebar. There are two ways to start a brand new chat conversation. On the upper left hand corner, you can click on the chat GPT logo right here, or you could click on the new chat button right here. Both will start a fresh chat conversation to start with, and then always make sure that you select which model you want to work with, and then you can enter your prompt and start a new chat. If you want more real estate on the left hand side, there's a button right here to close the sidebar. This will expand your chat box so that it takes up the whole screen and you can have more time focus on the conversation. And then you can open it by clicking it again and it will toggle the sidebar with the chat history. If you want to upgrade your plan or even downgrade and cancel your plan in the upper right hand corner, you could click on your avatar and then click on my plan. And here you can upgrade your plan or right below it says manage my subscription. You could click on that button and then you can cancel your ChatGPT plus plan. Lastly, if you want to log out of the ChatGPT app in the upper right hand corner, you could click on the log out button and that will log you out of the ChatGPT app. Thank you. That concludes this tutorial for the navigation. I'll see you in the next lesson.